Friends, I am Dr. Amdekar. We all are aware that with increasing scientific and technological advances and a need for evidence-based medicine in the modern era, with easy availability of laboratory tests, most of us easily order several tests not to miss anything and not depend only on your clinical diagnosis. To that extent that many of us might like not to much waste time on arriving at a provisional diagnosis before ordering a test. However, our theme has always been a rational practice and we want to be sure that we are ordering minimal required tests and also using minimal drugs but even spend more time on the bedside of the patient with good history and a good physical examination and ending up with good communication and counselling. And we all know that ultimately the test results must have an additional value of either confirming or at least supporting and if not ruling out a provisional diagnosis and therefore a provisional diagnosis is a prerequisite of ordering a test, but that's not enough. We need to test a test. And by that, what I mean is that we must have a test giving additional value to confirm the diagnosis and also guide us therapy. With this kind of background and knowing that a positive test may not mean an active disease and a negative test may not rule out a disease, we need to have a reasonable thought on testing a test. Now we know that after making a good provisional diagnosis based on a good clinical thinking and analysis, we start deciding whether the test is required at all. For example, if you have a classical uh, acute tonsillitis in a healthy child, high fever, toxic looking child, bilateral, largely inflamed edematous tonsils, maybe with some exudate on the surface and with a submandibular gland there. Your diagnosis is very clear. There is no need to have evidence of that diagnosis and not even knowing bacteriology because we know that it's a gram-positive organism and most important is you are able to follow the progress even with naked eye bedside medicine. And same is true for even acute pneumonia for that matter, whether the diagnosis of pneumonia as a pathology can be confirmed by the chest x-ray and to a small extent by the CBC considering a probable bacterial diagnosis, but you don't have necessarily to have a bacterial proof of which organism are involved because the tests are likely to be invasive and a negative test may not help us. In that case, we go by the epidemiological knowledge, age-related, likely organism, and then choose the right antibiotic. And of course, clinically, you make sure that you are expecting a follow-up as usually seen, and then only when that doesn't happen that you may have to consider some more tests. But friends, when there are diseases where there is an increasing misuse of antibiotics resulting into a lot of resistant strains all over, diseases like typhoid, tuberculosis, malaria must always be tested for a bacteriological evidence and a proof. And that is not difficult. You have a blood culture available easily. You also have molecular tests and you of course have a simple good peripheral smear if required supported by a rapid antigen test and therefore to that extent such infections 100% need a relevant test. But when it comes to say a disease like suspected meningitis or a UTI of course knowing that a subsequent complications if mismanaged if with wrong antibiotic choice could make a lot of difference, you must have a good test even of confirmation of a bacteriological evidence. Having said that, 
the first thing therefore after a provisional diagnosis is made is to try to understand whether the test is required and if it's required then which tests would be optimal and which tests are not necessary. For example, in majority of these conditions that I discussed, a ESR or a CRP are not really necessary at all. And then there is something like a fever panel which is absolutely useless and that's not really rationality. Once you decide if the test is required, second thing is also equally important is to consider what is the dependability and sensitivity of a test or a specificity of a test. Friends, we know that a sensitivity is an ability of a positive test to accurately diagnose a disease and a specificity is the ability of a negative test to confirm absence of disease. Unless we have a given a thought of sensitivity and specificity, we do not know the predictable value of such test and therefore it's equally important to choose a test that's reasonably sensitive and specific. But even then, the diseases which are very very common in our epidemiology, you would rather bank on a specificity to rule out such a test rather than a sensitivity alone and therefore you know that today a tuberculin test has no relevance at all to confirm the diagnosis of tuberculosis. It's no more sensitive test whatsoever and it's not even recommended. Therefore, after choosing the right test, also choose the test that's reasonably close to an expected sensitivity and specificity. Of course, knowing that none of the tests are 100% sensitive and specific and that's the challenge for a clinician to choose one over the other. Lastly, even the timing of a test may be of some importance because in a healthy child with acute onset of high fever, why not wait for first 48 hours to decide which way the fever is taking us to a probable provisional diagnosis and doing a CBC, CRP, ESR, etc. at that stage is thoroughly useless. You may have to wait for the right time, say about 48 hours, but of course, if you are suspecting malaria in a given situation, then even in the first hour of a fever, you might look at a peripheral smear more than just CBC, and you know that the fever rising at that stage, if you pick up a peripheral smear, you are likely to hit on the parasites. So then, this is the way you go about choosing a test, confirming the need of a test and deciding which test to do and what time to do. But having said this, let me also warn you that there are few situations where even without a provisional diagnosis, you need to be aggressive in doing tests. And one of such things is a child in ICU. In an ICU, there could be a multiple systems of action and to that extent, a clinical diagnosis is not really dependable at all and you must be aggressive in ordering several tests to make sure that every organ is not threatening to go down clinically which is much later to arrive and therefore in a, any patient with high risk like a neonate or an immunocompromised patient, you would be aggressive not only in ordering tests, but also ordering therapeutic measures. Having said all this, then friends, at the end, I would summarize that testing a test is important and just don't order a test. But a provisional diagnosis is a prerequisite of every test to be ordered. Then choose the right test, confirm the test is really of value, it adds some a more information that you required. Make sure it's reasonably a reliable test, dependable test with good sensitivity and specificity and it done well. And then only we will be practicing clinical medicine rationally. I hope I have made a point of testing a test and I hope you're enjoying this series. 
Now this series will take you through some of the investigations and how a clinician should look at it. Keep on being with us and also try to spread the knowledge of such YouTube channel to every friend of yours. Thank you very much.